Okay, here we are, 11.3, day two, still on independent versus dependent events. And we'll start right off with a little review, deciding whether the depends are in the events are independent or dependent and finding the probability. Two number cubes are rolled. One number cube showed a six and the other showed a number less than three. So if showing a six is the event, if showing a six affects the outcome of the other number showing less than three, if it affects that, then those events are dependent. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. I would say these events are dependent because if one number shows a six, the other number then showing a three would be greatly affected because it eliminates all of these possibilities from being uh, possible. So this would be a case where we have dependent events. And so our rule for dependent events, remember, was the probability of A times the probability of B, given that A happened because that probability is uh, slightly affected from the event uh, A happening. So if A happens, I highlighted these in green, that would be one of the number cubes showing a six. And then if you count all those up, that's actually 11 out of 36 possibilities times. Now, of those 11, how many show the other one that is less than three? So the other one less than three would be that one, that one, or that one or that one, right? So that would be four out of the 11 there. So four out of the 11 there, multiply those together. My 11s are gonna cancel out. And four over 36 is a total of one out of nine. And you can see the four out of 36 that we have highlighted are there, 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 and there. So again, if you can write the whole sample space out or if you're familiar with it, you may not have to do all of these calculations. You might just be able to look at it and say, yep, 436 or 1 ninth, right? Two number cubes are rolled, one white, one yellow, or one red and one blue, same thing. Um, one, the Let's just change these so it matches. So let's just say this is red and this is blue. So that would be blue as well. Read this again. Two number cubes are rolled, one red and one blue. The blue cube shows an even number and the sum is five. So again, I think this is going to be dependent because if the blue one shows an even number, that is going to be all of these, all of these, and all of these. And now if we're talking about the blue being even, that would change the possibility of a sum of five because that takes away the two, three, and the three, two. Actually, it doesn't take away the three, two, the two, three. Um, so that would be dependent again. So dependent probability of A times the probability of B given A. Probability of A would be the number cube, uh, the red one, or no, the blue one shows an even number. That's going to be 18 out of 36 times of those 18, how many have a sum of five? So this one has a sum of five. And are there any other ones that have a sum of five? One and four, right there. Yep, I believe that's all of them, unless I missed, I don't think so. So that would be two out of 18, and the 18s cancel out. Two out of 36, you see them right there, circled in black, and that would be a final probability of 1 18th. So again, more independent, dependent events. Okay, here's some selecting beads from a bag, and we're going to be talking about replacement or not replacement again. So if it's replacing it, that's going to be independent, and if it is not replacing it, that's going to be dependent. So that will be a little more complicated probability. Um, so probability selecting a white bead, replacing it, and selecting a, a red bead. So a white bead would be 3 out of 10 times the probability of 
a red bead, which would be 5 out of 10. And so that would be a total of 15 hundredths or 15%. If you don't replace it, now we're selecting a black bead, which would be 2 out of 10. And then the next one is going to be out of 9 because we didn't replace it. And another black one would mean that there's one less black even, so it's not 2 out of 9, it's 1 out of 9. So this would be then a total of 2 90ths, which reduces to 1 45th. Okay. Selecting three non-red beads without replacement. Again, without replacement, that's going to be dependent. So those probabilities are going to change. Non-red beads, well, there's five non-red beads, I believe. Let me double check. Five non-red beads. Yep. So that would be five tenths times four ninths times three eighths. And then I would simplify stuff before I multiply this out. So the 5 and 10 obviously is a half. The 2 can reduce with the 4, leaving a 2. The 3 and the 9 reduce, leaving a 3. And the 2 and the 8 reduce, so that's messy, leaving a 4. So I believe it is 1 12th. You can let me know if I'm wrong on that. All right, moving forward. A um, little different scenario now. We're given a table of values, so we kind of have some a little bit different wording, maybe a little more realistic problem. So sports partition, participation by grade, and we want to know the probability of a random student being selected that would be in grade 11. So grade 11, there's a total of how many in grade 11 here? we got to add this up. So 15, 11 is 26, 26 and 8 is 34, 34 and 5 is 39, and 39 and 61 is going to be uh, 100. So there's 100 students in grade 11 out of the total in the school of 440. Okay. Um, probability a ninth grade tennis player. So the probability you select someone is a ninth grade tennis player. Well, how many ninth grade tennis players are there? Looks like there's nine. So that would be nine out of a total of 440. Probability of a volleyball player, a volleyball player, is a 10th grader. So now we're honing in on all the volleyball players. And so our new total, if we get our, these are called our margins. So I didn't do that on this. I kind of slacked off. But if I added up my margin here, it would be 38 plus 11 is uh, 49, plus 6 is 54. So there's 54 total volleyball players, I believe. Yeah, 38, 49. Yep. So 50. So of the 54, what's the probability a volleyball player is a 10th grader? That's going to be 20 out of a total of 54. So we're just we're giving the condition that hey. We're looking at all the volleyball players. What's the probability that one of them is a 10th grader? Same thing here. An 11th grader is in track. So now we're looking at the whole 11th grade row. So we're not looking at a column. We're looking at a row. And so we're saying, all right, of all the 11th graders, what is the probability that an 11th grader is in track? So of all the 11th graders, there's how many of them in track? That would be 15 out of the total and in the row, and I did not do this yet, so this would be, uh, let's see, 26, 26 plus 13 is 39. Oh, wait, I did do that already. That was 100. Um, so of all the 11, 11th graders, there's 15 of them doing track. So that's 15 out of 100, which I know that reduces to 3 out of uh, 25, or no, 20. Okay, moving on yet. Brain break, hey -oh. you can pause here and do some of these fun little brain break puzzles or brain teasers. All right, skip through that. A uh, student must have a B average or better for all courses to qualify for any athletic team at Jefferson High School. Table below shows a distribution of students 
grades in the three sports. So again, very similar. We have a table, so we're given all this uh, data. And so we want to know if an athlete's randomly selected, the probability that a student is a basketball player with a B average. Okay, so if they are a basketball player with a B average, that means that they are one of these students. So that would be 13 out of the total 63. Okay, a student who plays field hockey, so now we're saying who plays field hockey, now we're looking in this row only, and so that's our whole sample space there. So the student who plays field hockey has an A average. Well, A average is going to be a pretty smart team there, 15 out of 19 total field hockey players. Student who does not play football has an A average, so does not play football. Okay, clean this up a little bit. If you do not play football, that means you are one of these students. And if you have an A average out of one of those students, that means you are in there or there. So that is 22 out of 39 total, I believe. So 22 out of 39 have students who don't play football. So 39 students don't play football. 22 of them have an A average. Okay. Now we'll talk about some more dice questions. Um, using two dice, find the probability of a cube showing a 6 and the sum of the two cubes is 7. All right. Just pause here and, and think about this one for a minute. Okay, so if I'm thinking about this one, the probability of a cube showing a 6 and the sum of the two cubes is 7. I have the sample space written right in front of me here. So this one to me is pretty simple where it's if a cube is showing a 6 and the sum of the two cubes is 7, that's these two possibilities right there. Okay, so I can look at that and go, yep, that's 2 out of 36, which is 1 18th. I have the sample space right in front of me. If I calculated that, I would have to calculate a conditional probability because they would be dependent. So I'd do probability of A times a probability of B given A happened. And I feel like we've done a bunch of those so far, so I'm just going to show you kind of the, the easier way when you have the sample space right in front of you. And it's fine to do that. Say, oh, look, there they are. That's the probability of a number cube showing a 6, and the sum is equal to 7. Uh, let's see, 14, probability, the total being greater than 9. Okay, so the total is greater than 9. And the second cube, we'll say the blue cube, shows a 5. So the total is greater than 9. So that would narrow everything down to be uh, 6, 4, 5, 5, 4, 6, or below. Right? So there's a total greater than 9. And the second cube shows a 5. Which one is that? Well, second cube cube shows a 5 is going to be right there or it's going to be right there. So how many is that? That's 2. 2 out of 36. Okay. So we have the sample space right there. Again, same probability, 1 18th. The second cube is less than the first cube and the first cube is a 4. So the second cube less than the first cube. That's going to be Let's see, the second cube is the blue one, we'll say. So second cube, less than the first cube, that's going to be, let's see, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, so it's all below the doubles right there. So we're talking about those. Um, and then the first cube is a 4. So of all of them where the first cube is a 4, we're talking about this one right there, this one right there, and this one right there. So how many is that? That's a total of three. Three out of a total of 36, which is a probability of 1 12th. Okay, so that one, you're given the sample space. It's okay just to look at it and answer the question without having to do the whole complicated process of probability of B, given the probability of A, and all that stuff. 
All right, then the last thing here we talk about um, and and or, you got to be a little careful with some of the wording. If it's and, we're talking about uh, multiplying, and or is going to indicate adding, so you got to be careful when or pops in there. Um, an experiment, rolling two dice, find the probability of rolling a five on either cube or a product of six. Okay, so now they're talking about a whole bunch of options here. So let's go back to our sample space and let's calculate this. Probability of rolling a 5 on either cube. Okay. Well, probability of rolling a 5 on either cube is going to narrow it down to here and there. you got to be careful not to double count, so that's 11, right? And the other condition was or, so that's 11. And then the other one said or a product of 6. So a product of 6 is going to be uh, 6 times 1, right? It's also going to be 1 times 6. It's also going to be 2 times 3. It's also going to be 3 times 2. And I don't think any other make a product of 6. So when it's or, you have to tally all these up. So there's 11 plus another 1, 2, 3, 4 for a grand total of 15 out of the 36 possible outcomes. can't read that. 15 out of 36, which is going to reduce to be, what, 5 twelfths. Okay, so you got to watch out for and and or there. And we're going to get into or a little bit more in 11.4 as well. Um, rolling a 4 and then a 3. So rolling a 4 first and then a 3 um, is going to be... Go back to the sample space. Rolling a four. That would be in the red one. And then rolling a three. How many possible outcomes is that? Right there, it's one. Okay, it's one. Rolling a four is one sixth times the probability of rolling a three is going to be one sixth as well. So it's one sixth times one sixth, which is. 136. The other one up there was 1136 plus 436 for a total of 15. So careful with and and or. And means multiply, or means add. All right, your assignment today is the 11.3 worksheet. And go ahead, have some uh, flexible learning space, and we'll see you guys Friday.